The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648, internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, the author of Mastering Probability, Steve Rhodes. Good day, money masters and treasure hunters. Welcome to the January 6th, terrific Tuesday edition of Hour 2 of the Trader's Edge. I'm your host, Steve Rose, and I hope that you're off to a great start of your day. Let's make sure that you and I, that we do everything humanly possible to have an extraordinary day. And let's always remember what's talked about is a dream, what's envisioned. Well, that becomes darn right exciting. What's planned becomes possible, but what's scheduled, folks, that becomes real. And I want to thank you for scheduling your time with me. I am grateful for your presence here. I am here to serve you. Of course, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648 internationally. That number is 727-445-1044. Would love to hear from you, help you. Remember, if you've got a question, somebody else has got that exact same question. So don't do it for you. Don't do it for me. Do it for someone else. A little random act of kindness. That is the way to kickstart your day. This is Terrific Tuesday. Of course, it's Tiger Financial Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got the Dow up 10 points, trading out at 17,511. S&P up a point at 2,021. Composite is down 10 points. Russell, 2,000. I'm not sure what it's doing. I don't, no, it's not right. Uh, when I look at it on my chart, it says off 22 points. I know that's not the case. DAX is up 76 points. The FTSE has turned positive out here. So the FTSE has rejected its swing point low it's up 11 points uh, gold's up seven bucks silver's up 13 pennies out here light sweet crude is back 80 cents uh, we got a lot of uh, the uh, gold mining equities are on the move so we'll spend some time looking at those here this morning uh, moving to the upside uh, this individual stock wise dollar wise the upside biogen is leading the charge up eight bucks cf industries is up six dollars bluebird bio up six bucks uh fibrogen up four dollars juno therapeutics man it's the ibb is on a roll here again that's up four dollars salix pharmaceuticals can i get to anything that's not a pharma stock no that's uh if i take a look at my top i don't know 10 15 whatever it is the majority of those are pharma based stocks now to the down downside out here price off 10 bucks this morning. Intercept Pharmaceuticals off 8 bucks. Google's down 6. Michael Kors down 4. PVH down 370. United Rentals URI off 3 bucks. Netflix off 3 bucks. Uh, Genuine Parts Company off about uh, $3. Did you see that Mercedes Benz? That uh, automated uh, driving Mercedes Benz that they were showing early this morning on CNBC. Now that is a, a party car. Of course, I believe those cars, if I'm not mistaken, uh, pretty much just operate on the expressways versus through normal day-to-day -day traffic out there. But nonetheless, looks like if you do a lot of expressway driving, you can have a party in that uh, vehicle out there. In any event, uh, that's the thing of the uh, future out there. So the Jetsons, not too far off. In fact, better than the Jetsons, in my opinion. Let's go take a look at these markets out here again. Uh, flat market in the Dow and the S&P as we speak right now. Let's go check in on the, uh, let's start off by checking in on the ETF structure. Let's go take a look at the diamonds, the Dow diamonds out here, DIA. Uh, right now, trading out at 174.82. Uh, it's trading with inside. Let me go ahead and turn off the uh, TAS profiles here for a moment. So give me a moment to do that. We can always turn these things back on. And we'll just clean up the uh, chart just a, a tad out here. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. Uh, take that off, too. Okay. So now as we take a look at it, here's what we know. Let me get rid of those moving averages, too. We're just going to get a clean little slate out here. Okay. So what do we know about the uh, Dow Diamonds? Number one. Let's take a look at this little uh, set of uh, this what we'll call wide price spread, accelerating-ish type volume back on December the 18th out here. We can see that price is trading with inside that gap. The gap top at 175.37. The bottom of the gap, 173.98. That says as long as you're trading with inside that, you might as well go close that window. Closing that window would take you to the 173.98 level. What we also know is that the actual swing point inside of the uh, Dow Diamonds is the 12.16 high. That is at 174.39. That level has not been tested. So at a minimum, if it can't bust it and get out of this uh, gap out here, 174.39 ought to get tested. Shoot, if you're going to test that, 173.98. Any close today inside 
that says that uh, you can go down and you can test. Now, yesterday you had the market pulling back with light volume. It all depends on how you want to take a look at it. If you take a look at the swing point, the actual swing point has 12 million shares. Yesterday's pullback was 6.7 million shares. Was it accelerating over the past few days? Yeah, but that's holiday trading. I don't even know how you do a proper derivative of trying to understand what the real volume would be under normal conditions. Yesterday, more normal conditions. What were normal conditions doing against normal conditions? Well, you were coming back with light volume. Still, though, it didn't test that level. It did not get down to the 174.39, so you really don't have any kind of a test to uh, make any kind of draw any conclusions on. That's what's going on inside the Dow Diamonds. We knew that it, we know that it was pulling back with light volume. If we take a look at the uh, SPY out here, do the same kind of a thing inside of the SPYs. What we can see is that the uh, SPYs are trading inside of that. Whoops, grab the wrong tool out here. Let's grab the right tool. It makes it a little bit easier. Right tool says 202.40, and 202.40 is the top of the swing point from December 16th. There were 259 million shares. You closed inside that yesterday with 169. Again, coming into it with light volume. We're in a seasonal cycle pattern where we should be expecting the next low to occur sometime between now and the next a week or so out here. So you're coming into a swing point with light volume. You know, what you'd really like to see is you'd like to see that low get tested, um, that being the uh, 197.86 area. Hey, as long as price does not get above 202.40, that becomes your possibility. So far, interest session high today, 202.40. So now that old line of support, which didn't get a chance to act as support, could become new resistance out here. 202.40 is going to be very very important to be watching inside of the uh, SPY out here. i got to get them to change. This was not a spike higher inside of the SPY, although it's a universal cross everyone's systems. It's just the holidays, and nobody went ahead and changed. I saw it was in Tom's Bloomberg. It's in my charts and e-signal. i got to give those guys a call and get them to uh, change that, uh, that the trading session from December 18th out there. Just makes it a little bit easier to look at accurate data, does it not? If we go take a look at the uh, QQQ ETF out here, uh, at 6.6 .6 million shares. It's just slightly lower, down four pennies. Uh, it is uh, well with inside that uh, swing point out here from uh, December the uh, 16th. That had volume down there of 65 million shares, and the Qs came down yesterday with 36 million shares. Way light on volume. Accelerated over the last few days, yes, yeah, slightly. But uh, again, uh, you know, how are you going to put the correlation of December 30th? volume of 18 million shares versus yesterday's 36 million shares. No way to do it. But we don't have to because we can say we're inside this swing point. You're inside it with light volume, but you're inside it. The Qs need to get above 102.47 post haste. Without that post haste, that says it's going to go down and test the low out there at 99.96 out there. Volume today, 6.8 million shares. Let's finish this off and go take a look at the uh, small caps, the IWM. Russell 2000 trading out of 117.04 down 30 cents right now. Uh, the IWM, it's going to be testing. Let's go see here. It's a, uh, well, it had that breakout session. It's actual swing point. It's way down here from December the 16th. That's down at the 115.34. So what's interesting here is if we take a look at the Qs, the Diamonds, the Spies, the IWM, which of them is the strongest out here? Yeah, it happens to be the IWM. It has not even gotten back to the, the December 16th if we're going to go ahead and measure it based on that uh, swing point. What we also have is the a little breakout session off of the bottom with volume. There were 70 million shares out there, the top of which is at uh, 116.99. That was tested yesterday with 51 million shares. So you got that coming into a uh, into a sign of uh, strength area between the, the little gap up from December 18th to December uh, 17th out there. And that gap has been tested so far. It's acting as support as we speak. 116.99 is the key. I'd say if it closes below 116.99, you're likely to Taking a look at the 115.34 level, that test of the swing point from uh, December 16th as it's likely stopped. That's what's going on inside of the IWM. So that covers the ETF structures for all four of those vehicles. Don't be paying attention to the minus 20 points that it shows up. I probably have to shut things down and restart it or something like that. I'm not going to do that here during the next 45 minutes. I'll wait till I'm off the air on that. Uh, let's go take a look at some of these mining stocks out here. Let me see here. Oh, well, actually, let's go over the Dow 30. What do we got inside the Dow 30 out here? Uh, uh, the 30 stocks looks like we got two, four, six, eight, nine or so that are trading to the downside. Nothing big. The biggest to the downside is Goldman Sachs. Let's go take a look at uh, GS is a ticker symbol. Let's go see what it is doing out here. So Goldman Sachs right now, this is the weakest. 
price-wise, dollar-wise, to the downside. Goldman Sachs is trading inside that December 16th. Well, it's testing, I should say, the December 16th uh, swing point. That December 16th swing point has volume of 4 million shares. Uh, you have done... 371,000 shares as we speak right now. Yesterday, you pulled back with 3.4. So you're pulling back into a swing point with light volume out here. Right now, Goldman Sachs is, uh, which is one of the top uh, five, I think, holdings. i uh, got to go look at it. But right now, it's testing the swing point, doing it with lighter volume. Uh, a rejection uh, would take place today if you see a close above 186.93 with less than uh, 4.1 million shares. That is on the Goldman Sachs. Let's take a look at uh, IBM. Let's take Take a look at IBM. What the heck? IBM, because it, it's waiting inside of the uh, Dow. Now, if we take a look at its retracement out here, not too uh, shabby, from the uh, low to the high out here, the low being that December 16th, the high being just a few trading sessions ago on January 2nd. What it has done, it's made a point three eight two retracement. That's at 158 Forty-two, 158.42, that's all that it's done so far. Not too shabby. Yesterday's volume, 4.8 million shares going into 4.7 million shares, going into 8.6 million shares, quite frankly, on December 19th. So IBM pulling back with some light volume out there. Hmm, something to think about. Let's go take a look at what it is that's moving to the upside dollar-wise inside of the uh, Dow. That's going to be McDonald's is up a buck 48. Merck is up a dollar nine. Let's go see what Mickey D's is. Uh, doing out here as we take a look at McDonald's. Um, its pullback yesterday was with volume of 6.2 million shares going into 11 million shares. Hey, uh, so so far as we take a look at these things, we're seeing Goldman Sachs pull back to the swing point low, test that area on light volume. Uh, we've taken a look at uh, Mc, uh, we've taken a look at IBM, you know, which uh, we know longer term doesn't look that great, but the shorter term basis only made a 0.382 retracement. That's one of your top holdings inside of uh, uh, the Dow 30 out here. Uh, McDonald's, uh, you know, pulled back yesterday with light volume out there. Uh, so this could be set in A to B equals CD to the upside. Let me see. What else do we got out here to take a look at? Let's look at percentage movers out here. So percentage movers to the upside, Merck. That's up nearly 2%. MRK is the ticker symbol out here. Let's go see what Merck is doing. Merck is uh, trying to take on its... Uh, so take uh, yesterday really did did not much. Uh, but today what it's trying to do is take on a, a current swing point that takes it to December 19th. That's got 17 million shares. And you've done 3.5 million shares already in 45 minutes of trading. I don't know about you, but my math says that you're doing more volume as you're moving into a swing point. So Merck is trying to take out a, a take on a swing point with volume as we speak here this morning. Uh, so that's uh, taking a look at a number of uh, the equities with inside of the uh, Dow out here. All look uh, all look pretty good. All should signal a uh, bounce. Uh, out here, percentage-wise, the downside, the leader, looks like percentage-wise is uh, General Electric. So let's go check in on the uh, General out here, uh, GE. Uh, this is not looking uh, good. It's trading inside the swing point from December 17th, 77 million shares yesterday. Uh, son of a gun. GE moved down with only 42 million shares yesterday. So uh, right now, GE testing the bottom of support of its TAS profile, 2426 out there. Hmm. This is something to think about. Steve Rhodes, TFNN. We'll be right back. Folks. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery in pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. 
platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report. And make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk, charges, and expenses of direction funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the direction funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Steve, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 72 points right now. Now, that should be no surprise to us after actually going down and diving in and taking a look at the uh, details on uh, many of the equities with inside of the uh, Dow out there. The S&P is up 8 points. She's trading at 20.29. Composite is uh, green now. She's trading up uh, 6 bucks. Uh, Russell 2000, I can't tell you. Hey, how about that? The, the DAX out there up 143 points. The FTSE up uh, 29. If we switch over, uh, we took a look at this during the first hour of the uh, Trader's Ed show. If we take a look at the uh, FTSE, FTSE, just as an example, what the FTSE's done here, now got a hammer candle for sure, um, as we speak right now. Uh, if it continues going higher, though, much higher, won't have a hammer candle. What the FTSE did is got back and attested the swing point low from December 16th out there, rejected that area, and now you're getting a bullish reversal signal out here. So that could say that the uh, testing to move lower is uh, over in the uh, market. So that actually looks pretty good inside of the uh, foot, uh, inside of the DAX as we speak right now. But what the DAX did here is the DAX yesterday, this morning, came back and tested a little rising price channel out here. Uh, it has rejected that uh, level, meaning moving lower, and it's back in. It's still staying with inside that uh, price channel. That's more bullish than bearish out there. In fact, uh, Larry, yesterday, uh, one of our uh, listeners, subscribers, sent in an uh, email. I think I got to it just at the very end. His question was, and we're going to go put this up on the screen, and uh, it was smart to point this out. I believe this is how he has uh, traded it. He was. His question was, hey, if you take the trend line off of the low from October 15th, and then you go ahead and you tag that into 
to the uh, December 16th low, has that become a, a decent potential buy area inside the S&P 500? You can see how he is right about that, how prices come down into that level and thus far has held as support. So you know the move out there. If you were taking a long position, if you break that uh, trend line, then you'd start to take a look at closing it out because you would expect a, a test of the December 16th low out there inside the S&P 500, 1972. I'm not saying that's not going to happen. Uh, but I am saying, uh, and, and the thing that is the uh, biggest concern, let's say what I have to say, the biggest concern in the marketplace is probably this chart out here. And that's the uh, chart here that measures the uh, Euro-Japanese yen. That's the uh, currency pair that tracks the U.S. stock market better than anything else. That's the top portion of my screen. The middle portion is the S&P futures. The uh, bottom portion is the yen Q. What we saw here was the Euro-Japanese yen was making lower highs while the uh, ES mini and the yen Q were, in essence, moving either sideways or making higher highs out there. Now, this pattern has resolved itself to the downside, as it should have, because the currency pair, the direction of the currency pair, typically shows the way in which the market is going to resolve itself. Now, this has not stopped trading lower. That is the uh, big concern out here. If we come back, we take a look at the, uh, to me, this would be the big concern. We take a look at that Euro-Japanese yen. Here's where it's doing right now. This is the uh, daily chart. If we take a look at the A to B equals CD down patterns, because those seem to have erased Oh, because I erased them. I turned them off. Let me go turn it back on. I forgot about that. you got to love it. Uh, if we take a look at, uh, there's your A to B equals CD pattern. So at this stage here, it's uh, doing a 1 to 1.272, 14109, until we see the bulls, until we see reversal, says that it could actually want some lower price. I would say, okay, then what we're seeing here is more likely a bit of a counter trend rally at the uh, moment. And that is a possibility. How will we know if that's not the case? Well, we'll know if that's not the case. Let's just do this here. Let's come back and let's paint it in. Let's go see if we can figure out what that counter trend rally would look like. Let's take a look at the E. ES Mini out here. So here's the ES Mini. Here's the 120 minute time frame. Let's go turn a few things off out here inside of uh, it. Um, yeah, let's turn off the volume. Let's turn this off. Let's turn that off. Let's just turn them all off. Make it. Uh, just make it kind of simple out here. Okay. So now as we take a look at the 120 minute time frame here for the ES Mini, and uh, what I'm going to do is probably going to. You know, what's the best way, where's the best place for me to start on this? I'm going to say it's probably right about, I don't know, I'm going to say it's probably right around this little candle right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a trend line in. So if we take a look at that uh, area here, probably to about right down there, it's going to get us close to three contacts. Let me uh, see. I'm going to use that right now as our, as our price channel. And then what I'll do is it probably looks like I can get a couple points. There we go. I get some at least three points of contact about right there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply move this up. So for our intent and purposes, there we go. That actually looks pretty darn good. Okay, so there's our, there's our price channel. I'll pull it up just a tad more. Let's see if I see if I can pull it up a tad more. It looks like I was running into trouble out here, so I'm not going to do that. Let's take take it right there. Okay. So now, as we take a look at this, let me just go ahead and stretch this out just a, a bit. So here is the ES mini. Here is the 120 minute time frame out here. The question is now. Let me put the NAD, the TAS market profiles up. So we'll just add that out here. See if I can do that. Okay. Perfect. We'll take a look at this when we get back from the break. Well, this is interesting. It broke its most current. So create a new market profile in the 120 minute time frame out here. We come back. We'll take a look at the ES Mini. I want to be able to help you identify, hey, is the market just put in a bottom or is this a counter trend rally? This is Steve Rhodes with TFNet. We'll be right back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. 
If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. How would you feel if you had a powerful decision-making tool that has the ability to find high-probability trading opportunities across multiple time frames in equities, currencies, and futures? Search no more. Take advantage of the best trade with the Taz Profile Scanner. Trade with confidence and clarity while using the software that thousands of institutional traders rely on to help them make the best and most accurate decisions. Scan over a 1,000 equities, currencies, and futures instruments for high-probability trading setups utilizing the Taz architecture. As seen on Bloomberg terminals worldwide, the Taz Profile Scanner is a benchmark technical filtering system that thousands of traders rely on, and now you can too. For a limited time, for TFNN subscribers only, we've reduced the price to just $97. That's over 75% off. Subscribers will also gain access to the December 9th workshop with John Logan. There's no obligation to pay anything. Get your 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner today by signing up at TFNN.com. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.MOBI in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 53 points. S&P's up 6. Uh, Composite up 2. So before we went to that break, we were taking a look at the ES Mini 120-minute time frame chart. So let's go take a look at that. This is going to give you a couple of tools here to be able to uh, measure and identify what uh, may be going on inside the uh, marketplace or is going on inside the marketplace. Now, we're starting with the uh, two-hour time frame chart here for the ES Mini. It clearly, if you're watching us on Tiger TV, thanks so much for doing that. If you listen on the radio, your mobile device at tfnn.mobi, I'm going Describe what we're looking at. Remember, you can you catch the archive of this show on Channel 10. Of course, you get a live stream in HD on your mobile device by going to the homepage of TFN.com. Upper right-hand side, you'll see a button. Feel those smartphones on that. Click on that. You'll see the show. Now, we're taking a look at uh, price channels out here. So not trend lines, but actual price channels. The uh, body of the candle is the essence of price, whether it's an open or a close. An open candle on mine, uh, you know, you'd see a green candle. The open is at the bottom. The uh, close is at the top. A red candle, the open is at the uh, top the close is at the bottom. The uh, wicks, the shadows, those are the extreme emotions during that uh, session. It's a two-hour. Each candle here represents two hours. Okay, so we got that clear. Number two, when you're identifying price channels out here, you want to try to find the largest number of 
contacts of the bodies, not the wicks, not the extreme emotions, the bodies. Now, if we take a look at the uh, bottom of the uh, price channel out here, you can see we got a contact out here is one, two, one being uh, the 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. from December 29th, and then you've got 10 to 12, so we got like two points of contact there. This wide-ranging bar coming down at 2 p.m. on December 31st, you know, there's your third point of contact. you got a fourth point of contact right here yesterday at 10 a.m. between 10 and 12. You've got, so that's another point point of contact you've got one here at coming into the close yesterday uh you've got one uh coming in at uh, 8 p.m last night at uh, around 22 to 2400 hours you've got a point of contact at 2 a.m so we've got the bottom of that uh, price channel is uh is is fairly solid. Now what that does is uh, because we're going to use a parallel line to that, that helps us to identify the top portion. Well, the top portion of that descending price channel is using the the open from uh, 8 a.m. on December 31st out here. It's using the, in essence, the open on January 2nd uh, that began at 10 a.m. Um, you know, and it's uh, using the uh, open at 8 a.m. on December 31st and the open at uh, 12 noon December. So we've got three points of contact out there. So what does that say? That tells us that counter trend rally would say that the top of this uh, price channel, if price can get back up there, that's where you would expect resistance. What happens if you see price break above that? Well, that would tell us that we may be experiencing a change in trend. What else would we want to take a look at that's going on at the same time? Well, I'd say you'd want to take a look at retracements. I'd say you'd go from the high to the low, and that right now, the dead cap bounce or 0.382 retracement would get you to 2039. Look at 2039. Uh, if price were to get above that level, you're going to break the uh, price channel for sure. Now, we're not there yet, but this is something that you can use to understand intraday, end of day, what's going on inside the uh, market of prices contained within here. Then what does this tell us? That tells us that the... Uh, uh, that the uh, can, that the downtrend will uh, continue or should continue inside of the uh, market. So that's on the ES mini. Now, I'll put up a if you want to let's get uh, let's even get more cozy. We're trying to find something that even gives us a, maybe an indication even sooner. Well, that would take us down into a, a ten minute chart here for the ES mini. So on the ten minute chart, that's what I've got up on my screen out here. I've got a, a two hundred uh, period. Uh, EMA, that's a black squiggly line going across my screen. That is held as resistance ever since uh, December 31st out there. So already into January the 6th. So as we can see, last time that was tested, by the way, that was back here at about 940 on uh, January 2nd. Uh, so on uh, January 2nd out here. So right now we can see as price got back up here uh, during this 10-minute uh, session coming into uh, the 10.30 a.m. We're now in the next 10-minute session. We have not seen a breakout of that area. We can also see the uh, TAS market profile resistance, which is what has held there at 2022. Likewise, support is around 2016. So uh, if you start to see a breakout above right now 2024 to 2025, this is going to fluctuate a bit here during the next you know, well, during the rest of the day, as uh, as moving averages do out here. Uh, but right now, I'd have to say a break above twenty twenty five. What that says, if you go back and you take a look at that uh, descending price channel, that says price probably gets up to around the 2028, 2030-ish type range out there. And any type of break above that with conviction says you've got a change in trend. So hopefully that helps you to kind of navigate. That's just using the S&P futures to help you navigate and identify what is uh, going on inside of the uh, marketplace. Okay, I think uh, time for a sip of water. Class is over. Class is dismissed out there. How about that? Now let's go take a look at... Uh, Let's go take a look at some things here that are moving inside of the marketplace. So I meant to go take a look at mining equities. So let's go do that. That's next up on the list. We've got the gold, which is off. Um, it's up three bucks, up four bucks. I say gold's got some problems here. Gold is not reacting the way that it, in my opinion, is not reacting the way that it should have. And the way that it should have is we should have seen a major move this morning that began at 3 a.m. Why? Because gold priced in euros broke above its consolidation level. When you break above a consolidation level, that should have trading desks that are just thinking in euros. That should have trading desks around the world say, hey, we got to break out of a consolidation. Time to uh, jump on that trade. Has not jumped on that trade. Hasn't moved much at all. 
So that says to me, well, why not? Let's go take a look at the mining equities nonetheless and see what they're doing out here. We'll take a look at uh, those that are moving the uh, largest mover out here percentage-wise. Let's take a look at the largest mover. That's going to be, uh, well, the NUGT, the nugget, up 11%. But uh, actually the largest percentage mover is Kinross Gold, up uh, 25 cents as we speak, trading out at 321. So let's go see what it is doing, what kind of volume this has in it, get a feel for what this might be doing. It's taken on a, a swing point out here, a little shooting star swing point. Takes you back to December the 9th out there. That was 16 million shares. You've done 6 million shares in an hour of trading. So Kinross Gold looks to me like if it can get above that high, which is 334, that'll go ahead and confirm an A to B equals CD to the upside. Kinross Gold then, therefore, if it gets above that uh, B point, which is uh, again priced out at uh, 333, then that ought to give you a move up into about the, oh, that cap in there. Uh, how did that do the workout? Only got the 1.618. Let me come back and uh, change the uh, tool out here. How did that work? Um, something happened. 1.0. Give me a moment to do that. This is really weird. Two. It's using the wrong uh, wrong tool. Anyways, uh, that's okay. One. 1.272. 1.618. Okay, there we go. Okay, so if we take a look at it, next stop, if it can take out 333, would be 385. Uh, 385 to 421 would be its move. Let's take a look at number two out here, percentage wise. We've got uh, Harmony Gold, HMY is a ticker symbol, up 8.5% this morning, up 18 cents, gapping up as we speak. What is this uh, taking on? Where's its resistance at out here in the case of uh, Harmony? Hmm, how about that? We don't see any. So now let's go take a look at retracement levels out here. Retracement off of the high back here from July of 2014. We can see that what uh, Harmony has now done, it's up above the point, gapped up through the point three eight two retracement level. 221 is the number. That would say that uh, this ought to head up to about 262 out here. I don't see any reason why it uh, shouldn't. That's on Harmony Gold. Let's take a look at Orico Gold, up uh, 6.5%, up almost 7% this morning, up 24 pennies. What it is, is it doing? out here um, where is its resistance level Again, I don't really see it so much as the uh, key reversal session in it, which was back from that uh, trading high on November 19th, down to low put in on December 24th out here. It's up above the 0 0.68 retracement level. What does that say? That says 0.786 is next on its uh, list, $3.92, or at least it should be. Now let's go take a look at week. What is week inside the uh, mining equities out here? you got Allied Nevada. Of course, this thing has been in uh, trouble, trouble out here. A and B is a ticker symbol. It just really has not. Uh, been able to do much as you can see so I'd say stay away from Allied Nevada. No reason to get into uh, this equity that I can see and it's weak here this morning. Let's take a look at um, Fortuna Silver Mines FSM. That's up uh, less than 1% out here but let's go see what it is doing uh, as we take a look at this equity. Weak or strong? Actually looks uh, not too shabby to me um, out here because the retracement was not too bad back in uh, December. Um, so now let's take a I got looks like I've got from swing point. Uh, okay, yeah. Don't, let me pull. Let me pull this back. Let's do this. We take a look at Fortuna Silver. You can see the uh, consolidation-ish type pattern. It's trying to take out a, a swing point here, uh, from which was also a key reversal. That high is 493. You're trading at 497. Not too bad. Volume there was 281, 281,000. You've done 93,000. Fortuna Silver looks like it is uh, breaking out. That would actually set up an A to B equal CD to the upside inside this equity, and this is one of the weaker ones for percentage-wise from a move from yesterday's close out here, and that's really what we're taking. Look at so we take a look at these mining equities. They look uh, pretty good. The one to one A to B equals CD says uh, five forty eight. What we also know about the mining equities is that they are going to follow suit with regard to the with regard to gold. If we take a look at the correlation. As soon as I can find it, uh, here's one of them at least. Here's the uh, here's a correlation between uh, gold and uh, which is at the top portion of my screen and the GDX at the uh, bottom portion of my screen. We can see how these things uh, pretty much uh, walk uh, in hand tandem. Now what we can see here is that the uh, mining equities, at least what I can see, looks like they are behaving much better. Uh, we'll take a look at the GDX uh, than the gold itself out there. So you know, is there a message there? Uh, well, the message here is that if gold doesn't uh, continue to uh, rally, 
um, and it starts to turn down, we'll see the same thing likely take place inside of the uh, metals or the mining stocks, I should say, out there. So that's what's going on inside of uh, those. Let's take a look at some other equities here moving and grooving in the uh, marketplace. Let's look at some things moving to the downside. Let's go take a look at uh, Priceline, uh, PCLN. That's off 16 bucks this morning, down 1.5%. Down yesterday, let's take a look at the volume behind yesterday's move. A million shares uh, going against a, a breakout uh, back here on December 22nd and uh, December 18th, 1.2 million shares. So it's coming into that level. It's traded down now inside of that gap, much like the same as when we took a look at the Q's, IWM, the diamonds out here. So inside of Priceline, looks like I did not grab the right area. Give me a moment here to do that. So I give you accurate numbers out here. Grab the actual low and the actual high. There we go. So 1077.85 is really the next test. That happens to be the swing point low inside of Priceline from December 18th. Now that's got 894,000 shares. We have traded with about 300,000 shares to the downside. So uh, that's coming uh, in there with the uh, volume. Hey, let's go out to uh, one of my favorite cities, Tallahassee, Florida, to uh, Ben. Ben, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing this morning? Excellent, Steve. Hey, great calls over the last uh, several months here. Thank hey, you. Uh, it looks like uh, real time here. We may have something uh, cooking on the on the short side. Do you agree for uh, let's say a two week trade? Well, um, are you are you already short or no? I'm just with with fresh fresh uh, money. Yeah, the uh, so the spy specifically. That's what you. That's what you would yeah. be looking at. Okay, so the yep. spy. Here's what we know about the spy. Here's what, if we take a look at just the spy itself. It is trading inside that December 16th swing point that had 259 million shares, and yesterday it backed into it and closed into it with lighter volume, 169 million shares. So I would have to say at this stage here, your reward to risk, whatever trade you put on, your reward at this stage is going to maybe be the bottom of that swing area. So 197.86. So you'd have to do the reward to risk to determine whether or not that's a trade that you want to put on. If you were to see, as an example, the SPY close back above uh, 202.40, well, let's say it does it today, and it does it even on lighter volume than it did yesterday. Now, today's on 42 million shares. Yesterday was 169. You know, I don't know at this stage how, what the extrapolation is going to be, but a close back above 202.40, and I would say no. Then yeah. the short, the you, short uh, trade would be there. Yeah. So you see so your two-week trend. Do you have a bias to the up or down, or? I well, my 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 my, the seasonal patterns. Not my bias, but the seasonal patterns say that in January we're going to make the next significant low. So we made a major low October sixteenth. That was that was uh, then that was after it completed the pattern the the S and P five hundred. So then the next low that came in it came in just a tad late uh, back in uh, December December sixteenth. The next low that should be formed is sometime between in the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. but right now your question specifically was really hey take a look at the spy. What do you think? And I think that whenever you make any trade, your target should always be the current swing point. And so what you and I have to work with here is December 16th. And then because the SPY itself traded in that swing point with light volume yesterday, as long as it trades inside there, it can go test the low. I don't know that the reward to risk, it depends on the, you know, you're, you're talking about a trade for a couple of weeks. Right. I would say you'd be better off right now at this stage of the game. You'd be better off trying to set up the long trade. Hmm. Oh, okay. I, so you you see you see that um, <clears throat> mid December is maybe the bottom point then. Well, it was a it was a it's possible it was it was certainly a low. I expect that what we're going to see is we're going to see the markets move higher. Now, they should form some type of next low within the next couple of weeks. It seems like with the uh, coming off of the highs, the way that we've done, that we're a little bit ahead of schedule. We're ahead of schedule by about a week. That says to me that we actually could see the low come in sometime next week. Okay. Very good. Uh, okay. Thanks, Steve. That's, that's my best analysis. Yeah. No, I'm you with bet. you. It's, it's tough right now. Thank you. You bet. Okay. That was Ben in the beautiful city of Tallahassee. Folks, if you've never gone up there, go on up to Tallahassee and go walk around that FSU campus. That is a beautiful place. This is Steve Rhodes. This is TFNN. We'll be right back.
Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Basil Chapman as he uses his Chapman Wave methodology to call the markets. The Tiger Technician's Hour, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's off uh, four points. The S&P is flat. She's uh, trading out of 2019. Uh, composite down 13. Our man Basil Chapman is under the weather here today, so uh, he won't be able to uh, do his normal show. Uh, we're going to replay uh, the uh, the opening hour, the 8 a.m. hour, with uh, John Logan. So that'll be replayed in uh, in Basil's presence. And as we do on Tuesdays, we've got the options hour. That's from 12 to 1, 1 to 2. We've got uh, Daryl Martin. Then we've got David White, uh, 2 to 3. Tom O'Brien, of course, from 3 to 5. And then Andy Heck will go ahead and take it on home 
from uh, five to six. Uh, of course, uh, we you know taking on home. We got to get that Dave Mason song playing. Uh, playing for Andy before he comes on to the air. Yeah, hopefully you guys uh, have had an opportunity to see to see uh, Dave uh, play his uh, play his little banjo out there. In any event, uh, so where are we at in the uh, market? So in the case of uh, Ben uh, Ben was uh, uh, from Tallahassee. Was you know the question was, hey, do I do I short the market uh, now? Um, remember when you're when you're whenever you're placing a trade. Uh, this is my suggestion that you always take a look at what uh, when whenever you're going long or short, you got to have targets, right? And you got to make uh, risk reward decisions out here. And your targets should really always be the the most recent uh, swing point. So in the case uh, in Ben's case, it was pretty easy to say you got to go do the risk reward. But December sixteenth, you know the low is really your target 197.86 and what we know is that price was coming in there our volume was uh, light yesterday um, you know, volume accelerates in there. It encourages that uh, it, it signal should be the price will will go test low, maybe bust it out. Now, if if price was below the two hundred two forty level, then we could say from a risk reward standpoint that uh, Ben wanting to go short or anybody wanting to go short the S and P five hundred, especially if you can bust that out with volume, then that says okay, you can get down all the way into that October fifteenth area. Do I think we're going to do that? No, I don't. But it, but but that becomes your. T- Target. That has to become your target. And the spy out here, unfortunately, because I have a bad tick, I think it's right around here, uh, right around the 209 uh, level. Um, you, then you have to also start taking like a retracement areas. But your target ought to always be that uh, swing point, or at least some retracement uh, of that out there, uh, no matter what it is that you're trading. So back to the uh, ranch out here. Uh, before we uh, go ahead and close up uh, shop, uh, um, if we take a look at the uh, the. the uh, the IWM, let's go take a look at the uh, small caps out here. The Russell 2000 right now, it is trading inside that uh, swing point. Well, I'm sorry, it's, taking, it's trading inside this little December 17th, 18th breakout that had 70 million shares. You've done 9 million shares so far today in an hour and a half of trading. So that's a little bit light volume. But it does look like what the IWM wants to do is get down and test the 115.34 and get into that December 16th uh, swing point uh, out there. At least that is the uh, current message. And it's so long as this uh, euro Japanese yen, this currency pair continues to trade lower and provide us with no reversal signal, that would be the likely target. If we take a look at where the uh, Gartley setup is inside the euro Japanese yen, that takes place right around the, uh, let me pull this over to the side, that takes place right around the 140. Point one two area, one thirty nine point four two is your one point six one eight eight B equals C D. But remember, the currency pair is trading all night long, uh, and uh, therefore it could actually form some type of reversal while everybody is sleeping out there. But uh, I'm not saying that's going to happen. Uh, but uh, it looks to me like the target, the reversal area for the Euro Japanese yen, will come in somewhere between the one thirty nine to one forty level, and you're trading at one forty one sixty three. So that's does say a bit more pressure inside of these markets. Well, folks, have a, a terrific Tuesday as always. Thanks so much for joining us here at uh, TFNN. I look forward to seeing you bright and early tomorrow morning. Take care, folks. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com.